Okay, working on the cabinet switches here. They're pretty beat up. Um, let's open the coin door here. The ones on this side are pretty much the most hacked because we've got a bent switch here. It's bent way the heck over. Let's see if we can get this focus. Here we go. There. There you can see how badly this one's bent just to make it fit. So this thing's roasted off. And we got a different kind of blade on the back. And then with this guy, the point is just nothing. It is gone. And let's see what we can figure out here. And same thing here. I unsoldered the top one here. So first I was going to use this switch. This is actually uh, just out of my parts bin. I believe this was off of a uh, Chicago coin relay. It's got a nice thick point on it. It would have worked. But I said, you know what? This switch has got a little plastic nub on the back side there. Just to kind of keep it away from the cabinet switch. Even though it's got a... Uh, even though it's got a, a paper, fish paper on the back of it to isolate it electrically. So what I did is I went to my stash, and this is a switch from a score motor. So uh, I got a spare score motor here that I took out of the machine, and uh, this switch is going to work perfect. It's got a nice heavy-duty contact on it, and it's got that plastic nub. Here's another one. I'm just going to have to trim this down a little bit, and we will have like new flipper switches and um, if you wanted to see how the switch was built originally like I did let's head over here to planetary pinball and I pulled open a catalog for 1966 which has the uh, information on it sorry it's so flickery here but uh, right flipper switch left flipper switch to it tells you how it's built tells you where the fish paper goes and uh, it's a pretty handy dandy thing Okay, one last update for tonight. I got uh, got everything done here. Got some more light on here. Switch turned out great. Looks good, much better. We swing around to this guy here. Get alongside the plunger there. Here we go. That looks so much better. And it's going to work good too. So the flippers should work nice with those new switches. Um, another note, got some stuff hooked up here, cleaned up some more terminals, got these going, and uh, things are going pretty good. Still got to do the plumb bob tilt, and I got to get the uh, ball trough cleaned up and fixed, but uh, hopefully be flipping her by this weekend. Okay, here we go. One of the last, uh, hopefully, last set of switches to clean here. This is on the ball trough. And uh, got the inside cleaned out. Got a lot of the dust out and whatnot and touched up some of the rust. Got rid of some of it. And these are the switches. Based on what I can tell, I don't have the uh, schematic or manual for this game. But this game, from what I've read, probably uses one ball, which makes sense. Because it says to insert the balls here and that's actually the end of the line for it. So um, what I figure happens is the ball comes in here and it just does the various things to end the game like uh, re you know, bring down the ball count and probably uh, add up various things, check stuff, just the things it needs to do plus there's a switch on the very end so the game knows that there's a ball ready to go. So uh, yeah, this will be interesting to see how it works and um, hopefully it'll work without me having to get the schematics and stuff but if I do, well, that's okay. Okay, I thought I'd share a little uh, tip, uh, something that's nice to do for when you're assembling the machine or taking it back down. Um, I'm getting ready to put the legs on here, and what I'm doing is I'm running a tap through the plates that hold the legs on. And you can use like a thread chaser bolt too. Uh, this is just what I happen to have on hand for it. That will help the bolts get in much easier. The other thing, since I'm reusing the old hardware here, 
Again, this is a repair on a budget. I've got these thread chasers. I, I think I picked them up at um, Harbor Freight or something. And what these are, it's a nut that's got, it's, it's sort of like a, a die, except it's not, it won't cut the threads. It's not meant for that. It's just meant to clean them up. So what you do is you just put it in a socket or a pair of pliers, and you run it down the bolt there. And uh, it really helps to do this. Um, let's see here, thread one on here. So you just thread one on, you run it down, and when you go to put the legs on, they'll, the bolts will go on much easier. They won't um, cross thread or get jammed up. And when you go to take it apart, uh, it'll be just much easier. So it's just one of those little things that's nice to do. It takes some extra time, but it's well worth it. All right, here we are installing a bolt, and this is the reason why I do the extra work. Bolt goes in, finds its home right away, and it just goes in beautifully. Sometimes even new bolts need this done to them. Just tighten it down, and then you're done.